My dad is my superhero. He's my role model. He's the man. He's the person whom I always look up to. He's the one whom I go to for advice, whom I go to for my math problems, for my physics problems. My car doesn't work. My car won't start. Dad, what do we do? The oven is burning. Dad, what do we do? My visa is expiring soon. Dad, what do we do? What am I going to do? I don't know what to do with my life, Dad. I just finished high school. Now what? I just got a girlfriend. Now what? My sister did this. Now what? <laughs> I think within the self-development and this manosphere space, a lot of emphasis is put on the father. You know, like people say... Girls, when they have daddy issues, that's when they start becoming degenerates. That's when they start to not respect their bodies, start acting promiscuous, not valuing their beauty, their bodies, the thing that God gave them, and they misused it. And same with men. When boys have daddy issues, they become effeminate men. They become weak. They have no purpose, no sense of direction. Or they might go the complete opposite. They might look towards the wrong type of male models. They start joining gangs. They start putting their lives in danger, committing their life to a life of sin and crime. My dad, he wasn't any of that. He was stoic. He was masculine. And yet he's also caring. Some may even call him feminine. He has a real soft side to him. He's the man whom I go to for all of my problems. You know, when I grew up and when I came to Australia, there's this thing about being a man that every boy should take great pride in. When I went to school, the thing that people often repeat over and over again into our boys' minds is that you shouldn't expose your vulnerable side. You shouldn't be emotional. You shouldn't show any sort of emotion, any sort of weakness. It's not okay to cry as a boy. Oh, that would be acting like a girl. You throw like a girl. If you don't compete, if you have no competition, if you don't win, you're a girl. You have to dominate. You have to win. There's no emphasis being placed upon collaboration. It's all about competition. And if you stray from this narrative, then you're seen as weird. I wasn't involved in any sort of sports team. I was sort of aloof. I was doing my own things. I was into arts. I was into music. I was into writing. I'm a deep thinker. I don't try to one-up another guy. I always try to find the least violent way to solve problems. And I realize that's why I have so much self-hatred and resentment because I was in an environment in which my true authentic self is not appreciated. When I express any sort of weakness, any sort of emotional vulnerability, I was shut down. I was rejected. And I think that was for the better in some circumstances. I mean, as a man, you are expected to be responsible for your family, for your tribe. For the people who depends upon you for protection, for guidance and leadership. That's our masculinity potential. And I think as a man, we all need to achieve this potential somehow. But then life isn't always about competition and winning and trying to one up another and trying to beat other men so that you can be the best. Sure, we should all try to become the best version of ourselves. But to be a man does not mean that you have to be a complete brute and you don't have to be a dictator. You don't have to kill every single person in your way. Strike down all of your opponents. Make people feel inferior. That's not what being a man is like. Being a man to me, as my dad has shown me, is to act with integrity and to do things rationally, but also with kindness and love. And as humans, you know, we are social creatures. We are not anti-social creatures. Every good thing that has come out of our society has came out because of collaboration and teamwork. Sure, we can all compete and try to get better 
try to beat our op- opponents, but you have to ask the question of, for what? For the greater good of humanity, of course. To paraphrase Nietzsche, one of the greatest philosophers of all time, you should aim to become great, not good. And I think we can all sit here and argue all day about what he means by this and what is right and what is wrong. But to me, greatness without love is just vanity. You are serving the wrong God. I know Nietzsche is not really a Christian. He's very anti-religion and he advocates for becoming the best, not becoming the kindest. He's very against kindness because he argues that kindness is what has stopped us from really realizing our potential as a species. We need to become great. And I think people can have different interpretation, different meaning to this. What does being great is like? To me, being great is to get to the top at the expense of others. Being good is that you're not really trying to become the best of the best. You're trying to get better, but you also think about how to get others better. So not at the detriment of others. And I think that's what being a man is like. Sure, we all have dreams and aspirations. We all have goals, milestones to reach, opponents to beat. We want to get somewhere. We want to make progress. We want to be better every single day. But then for what? Just so that you can feel better about yourself? Just so that you can dominate others? Does that give you some sense of gratification to see others suffering, to humiliate others? And I know I am speaking in exaggeration here. Of course, most people, they don't do this to humiliate others. Otherwise, they would be psychopaths. But I mean, to be a man is not just about beating others just for the sake of it. And my dad, there's a real humility within him that I really adore. And my mom and my sister, they are actually quite controlling people. (laughs) My dad, he's been so patient, so kind, so prudent. And this is something I really admire about him. I don't really talk about my dad that much, but I got a lot of this patience from my dad. A lot of my time, my mom and my sister would go off on a tangent, throwing tantrum. Not really, but I mean, they would be nagging us, telling us to do things that we know that we are supposed to do, but they want it done now, here, whatever. They want it their way. Rather than being a macho alpha man, telling my mom to shut the f*** up, telling my sister to zip up and we are the boss here. We don't do that. (laughs) Man, I feel so bad for saying this. Sorry, mom. Sorry, sis. I make you sound worse than you actually are. But sometimes, man, you guys drive us crazy. We know we got to do these things. Let us just finish our lunch, okay? Anyways, guys. Yeah, my dad, he's really patient with this. He tolerated a lot. And I think that's why the marriage worked. There has to be some sort of compromising. If my mom is a control freak, my dad has to yield to her. But my dad is not a total pushover. He's patient in that he allows my mom to let out these emotions. She loses control. She acts a certain way, she lashes out because she was under the stress of her work. And so is my sister. And my sister actually, she... She was in a bit of a temper today. She lose her cool. She yelled at me and she curses at me. And that made me nearly lose my cool. I had to talk to my dad about this. He told me, son, go out for a drive with the dog. (laughs) <laughs> do what you got to do and then come back and you'll be clearer. And I did feel a bit clearer now that I'm talking about this. We're going to solve this problem as a family. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. If you're still listening, stay strong. God bless. Be a man, but not the wrong kind of man. You know what I mean. As always, I love you all. I have complete faith in all of you. And go out there and serve others with kindness. Peace.